That was a bit hectic there. <laughs> the people saw. Hey skiers, I'm Jeff from SkiEssentials.com. I'm Bob, how's it going? Uh, we got a pretty darn exciting video today, don't we Bob? I always like new skis, but especially this kind of whole story built into this whole line is really exciting. Yeah, me too. So you guys probably have seen some teasers on this. I feel like Fisher, in particular in the past few weeks, they've been really putting out a lot of teasers. Um, we posted a video on this ski and also a video on that ski. Yep. So maybe you saw those on social media, um, but here it is. This is the brand new 2023 Fisher Ranger collection. Um, kind of have a lot to talk about in this video. It'll probably be somewhat of a longer video, but I think it's a really cool story and I think the skis are great. Um, so yeah, pretty, pretty exciting stuff up here. Yeah, and people have been interested in, you know, the, the outgoing Ranger skis for quite a few years now. So it's kind of a nice transition to this, to this new setup here. Absolutely. Um, so this is the complete new line. Uh, we're going to talk about it more in depth in a little bit. Um, but basically right here, we've got 90, 96, 102, 108, and 116. Um, before we get into the details, I think just off the bat, we can say that there's no more Ranger FR and Ranger TI line yeah. or two distinct different lines. There's now just one collection of skis. Um, and we can talk a little bit more about the what that or what that does to the line in general. Yep. Um, but before we do, uh, big thanks to Fisher because um, we've been involved in this one for a long time now. Yeah, it's been over a year. Which well is over a year. Pretty pretty amazing. Yep. And I want to say it was really like two years ago that Fisher initially reached out to us and said. We're going to design a new line of ranger skis and we want you guys to be involved. Yeah. And we were like, absolutely. You know, those skis really had, had come onto our radar in recent years, probably notably the 102, mm -hmm. you know, really took off, especially when they made it pink. Yep. Everyone just wanted that <laughs> ski. So they reached out to us, asked if we wanted to be involved, um, and we were thrilled to be involved. So I think the first time we skied them, um, we skied the first set of prototypes in December of 20, 20, 2020. One or 20? 2020. Okay. December of 2020. So yeah, a little, you know, a year and two months ago at this point. Yeah. Um, you were with us? Yep. Did you enjoy that process? I did, yeah. It's great getting it. Like, we always, I think we get kind of some flack for pushing 2023 20, skis when it's not even 22. <laughs> and this kind of took it to a whole new level with the <laughs> skiing three years ahead of time. Totally. So yeah, I mean, it's always fun being a part of something like that. And especially when the product kind of speaks to, you know, having that success, which yep. is great. Yep, that initial testing, um, pretty sure we were on the 96, 102 and 108. Yep. Um, and I'll admit that in that first round of skis, and if I recall correctly, you said something similar. They weren't perfect. Right. There were some things I'm not going to say wrong with them, but there were some <laughs> things that we didn't necessarily like. Yeah. So it was a really interesting process, the prototyping and testing process, because it wasn't just like, this is great. You know, sometimes yep. on our test days or, or media days or whatever, when we're out there on a bunch of different skis, like, it's all positive. Yep. It's just like, yeah, these, these things are great. But through that prototyping, yeah, it was it was cool to like kind of pick out some things that we didn't like about it, mm -hmm. um, and give that feedback to Fisher. Um, and we did two rounds of that initial prototyping with Fisher. We did one in, in January, or so the first one in December, another one in January of 2021. Um, by that point, they had made some changes to the skis, gave them some feedback on that. We uh, got to sit down and look at graphics got to give them some feedback on that. Um, and then this past summer, if you guys watch our channel, uh, Marcus and I had the opportunity, opportunity, excuse me, to go out to Mount Hood. And that was essentially the final round of testing and prototyping. Yeah. So by that point, um, they all but had a finished production version of the 102. 
Um, I don't know if it was exactly the top sheet graphic that they landed on eventually, but pretty much that ski was done. Um, that was really cool. Kyle Smain was out there with us. Uh, Forrest Peterson was out there with us. Deb Armstrong was out there with us. Um, really, really cool. Mike Hattrip put that whole trip together. Uh, took us up to the top of Mount Hood, which was yeah, crazy, sketchy, uh, <laughs> but a lot of fun. Uh, Mike has since left Fisher. He's, he's moved on to another company. But again, big thank you to, to Mike Hattrip for making that happen. Yep. Um, and I would say on that trip, we kind of focused a little bit more of our testing and, and nitpicking on these 96s. Um, for me in particular, I really, really enjoyed chasing down Forrest Peterson with a camera. Um, she's like fresh off the U.S. ski team and can make a pair of skis do yeah. things that I can't make a pair of skis do, uh, or at least looks different when <laughs> doing so. Um, so that was really fun for me. Um, after we did one big long day of testing out in Mount Hood, um, we all kind of grouped up down at the Huckleberry Inn. Uh, had some lovely breakfast at like 2 in the afternoon because we skied like <laughs> all day and none of us had eaten anything. Um, and we shared notes, you know, shared our testing data. We all had test cards and stuff. And that was really cool because pretty much everybody is sitting at that table. Um, and you had a lot of different skiers from different backgrounds. Pretty much everyone on that in, at that table was in agreement on this ski here um, and kind of where to tweak it and where to customize it. Um, and yeah, really happy with the result. Um, so that was that was pretty much the gist of the testing and development process with Fisher it was really, really cool. Um, and then I got to go out to Winter Park in early December, mid-December, um, and got to see the finished versions of all these skis. Um, got to talk to Lindsay Dyer, got to chase her with a camera for a little bit. She skis the 108 a lot. Um, Louise Lintelak was there. Yep. Kyle Smain was there. Sophia Schwartz was there. It was another really, really cool group of skiers. Um, and, and by that point, they were all done. Um, all the skis were final. We really just got to kind of check out the final production or final product in person. Um, and for me in particular, you know, on that trip, I felt like I was in a slightly unique position compared to the other attendees on that trip because I got to look at these skis and, and think we helped yep, develop these skis. We weren't like the most important part of the development, but we got to give our input. Um, yeah. And I thought that was really cool. And taking it from that development point to, to this really, to be like, okay, right. now we get to introduce this to you right. and we really have this firsthand knowledge of the process, which I think is just yeah. incredibly beneficial and really awesome, yeah. you know, especially for the skiers yeah. of the world. No. So that's great. Yeah. And just selfishly, like it was super rewarding <laughs> for me. <laughs> you can take that if you want. <laughs> really fun. Um, so this is it here. Um, Bob, I just talked a really long time about the <laughs> development story. Um, so can you kind of take us through at least the construction, kind of what's going on here? Sure. I'll just take this random one here. Um, so this is the 102 uh, color Celeste is what we're calling it. Uh, they have two different colorways for the 90, 96 and 102. Yep. Uh, the construction is the same. You know, they will call it uh, that yellow and this uh, as the, the women's version in the catalog. Uh, really, it's, it's not. It's the same exact ski. Even the, the women's version comes in more length options. Yep. So start shorter, still goes all the way to the top. Um, so if you are, you know, male, female, anywhere in between, you can ski any of these skis. It's the same thing. Yep. So just deciding on color and length option. So just to get that out of the way, there's no difference between these. Yep. Um, and that's kind of like piggybacking off the pink ski. Correct. The, the pink ski they made in every length. Made in every length. So yep. although you don't see a pink ski up here, which maybe some of you are disappointed, yep. um, they have kind of <laughs> carried that theme forward. And I'll also say don't be disappointed because that thing looks awesome in person. Yeah, this is a really, really sharp looking ski. And I'll interrupt sure. you one more time okay. just to say that these are all available now. Yep. Um, I should have started the video with that, but sometimes we just get really excited about new skis sure. and just gloss over the like 
administrative details. Right, that we um, sell them. But these are, yeah, you can buy these from us. <laughs> that would be great, thanks. <laughs> um, Construction-wise, though, uh, everything down to the 90 has the same wood core, so it's a mix of poplar and beech in the wood core. Uh, the, this one's just poplar, I believe. Yep, just poplar in the 90. Uh, these other ones are poplar and beech. And then kind of where they're really separating themselves in the construction perspective from the older rangers, uh, they are kind of taking the best part of the TI and the fun part of the FR and mixing it with this shaped metal. So it's a shaped TI laminate here, uh, and it is cut. So this flex cut uh, varies per length. So in this 102, it's more of a dramatic cut. It's a more uh, longer uh, laminate up on the sides and then down through the tail uh, versus the wider 108 and 116. Yeah, and uh, then conversely, conversely, you can see the, this 90 gets really, really long shaped TI. Yeah. And I think you said flex cut in there, um, which is technically referring to this little, little narrow yep. triangle there in the middle. Um, which is another cool kind of element to how they shaped that TI. Yeah, and it's their half millimeter uh, width. So, um, you know, it's got some strength to it, but it's also keeping it pretty light. Yep. Uh, so it takes that, the old TI version had that full plate underfoot and then it connected to the carbon nose. So that's gone, you know, it's full wood from wherever the metal ends on your specific length up through the shovel and the tip of the ski, uh, conversely through the tail. So that's the main construction difference is we get a full sidewall on these skis. There's no more of the uh, convex shaping, yep. uh, that arrow shape that they use on the older Rangers. So that's gone. It's pretty much just a flat, you know, flat shape all throughout. Um, so that gives it more of a traditional feel. So they kind of, you know, t took away some of the metal through the central spine uh, and, you know, just made it a more consistent edge to edge wood core. Just smoother. Yeah, definitely. When you put this thing on edge, you can definitely feel that smoothness. Yeah, if I had to pick one word to describe it, it's just yep. they're smoother. Um, and then shaping and profiling, this is where they mix it up as well. Um, they definitely have their more rockered sh profile as they get wider. So we do see this nice long rocker profile here, pretty moderate splay on the 102. And then that follows through to the tail as well. You know, this is kind of where this differentiates a little bit from the FR, especially in this 102, because that was the popular model um, where it's kind of like they started the twin tip and then just cut it flat, you know, even to go so far as to make this slight skin notch in here. Again, kind of adding to the versatile nature of the ski saying, sure, put a, put a hey, hybrid binding on this, put some could. skins on it, go, you know, go into the back country. Um, but it's definitely kind of has that twin tippy shape, more of a free ride twin tip than a freestyle. We were just talking about that yep. uh, before we started videoing. Um, but really just a nice overall fun, playful shape, especially for this 102. Yep. And then we're flexing them too. It's definitely got, as they get narrower, you can feel that flex. And then part of it's the, me the metal, uh, part of it's the width, but it definitely makes a difference in how the skis flex. Yep. Um, so we've we've had them all on snow yep. now um, quite a bit actually. I've I, we were noting before we started filming that I have skied every single one. Yep. I think I'm the only one in the company that <laughs> skied every single one because I'm the only one that was willing to ski the 116 on a non-powder day. Yep. Um, but just to kind of run through them quickly, you know, we will do full reviews of all these skis certainly, or at least the 90, 96, and 102. Uh, maybe the 108 as well. Um, probably won't have a long, full review of the 116, but maybe we will. Yep. Who knows? We're doing some other powder skis this year. Uh, so I thought it would be cool to just kind of run through them narrowest to widest um, and talk about kind of where we see them falling, where the application is, where they're going to be best, um, starting with this 90. Um, so the 90, to me, Every time I think about this 90, I just think about like versatile East Coast performance. Yeah. Um, this thing, you know, I, I think it's kind of, I think it's kind of fair to say that this ski takes elements from both the outgoing Ranger 92 and the Ranger 94 FR. 
it's got like the carving prowess of a Ranger 92, but then it's got some kind of like dancing quickness that that Ranger 92 didn't necessarily have, but the Ranger 94 did. Yeah, and there's a lot of 90s out there. Right. You know, it's kind of, it's tough to jump in with a new ski. Right. And say, all right, we're in the mix. You know, I think Solomon did a nice job with the, with stance, the stance 90 sure. a couple of years ago, and this is a very similar kind of uh, entry. It, I don't think it skis the same way as the stance. But no, certainly not. It, it definitely has that same uh, unique unique addition to the, you know, that current spot in yep. the ski wall. Yep. Um, it carves pretty darn well, yep. you know, with this longer metal. Um, you know, again, it's not like, it's not shaped like a true carving ski. It's shaped like an all mountain ski which i think is important yeah we skied the pole fisher line the other day and they still have the rc186 gt right so this doesn't need to be like a full-on carving ski i think it makes a lot more sense and and how it's how it is um, so it'll carve turns just fine i don't think it's going to be the most powerful carver in its category but Combine its carving performance with its mogul performance, and it's yep. going to be one of the most versatile, for sure. Yeah, I like, I like it when skis stop their metal here for moguls. Yeah, you know, and give you a little rise in the tip. Yep, and you know, like a black crow serpo came to mind when I was yeah. looking at this in the construction and saying, okay, that metal ends, and then we have a nice, fun, playful tip, and right. then same thing with the tail, where you get that unencumbered by metal in the back where you can really release and be playful. Yeah, you know, in fact, Serpo might be one of the best comparisons to these skis because that's shaped like an H, right? that metal laminate, which is very similar to kind of how Black Crows yep. conceptualizes those things. Uh, but no, I've been having a blast skiing the 90. Um, we've been on some shorter lengths in the 90. I know you've been waiting for a longer length to test, Bob. Um, so it'll be interesting to kind of get you on it. I'm sure you don't really want to ski a 170. No, I mean, I would, you know, it just wouldn't give me the most accurate representation of, yep. what, the, of what the ski can do. And then bumping up to this 96, um, first I'll say the yellow looks awesome. If you want yep. both, both, you can yeah, just I'll have both, both yellows. Um, 96 is really, really cool. If you're really the type of skier that, you know, I guess thinking to like an East Coast skier, if you like to split your time between groomers and trees, this is a great ski. Yeah. You know, where where that 90 is probably a little bit more on trail focused. You're probably, maybe you're going into the moguls and stuff like that, but you're not seeking out like fresh tracks. Yeah. Where this ski, I feel like you can do that and it performs really well, um, but then you can just rail some carbon turns on it too. I think this is their, their strongest option in terms of them mixing their former Rangers. So the 99Ti yeah. and the 94FR, yeah. like this is a perfect blend of those two skis. Yeah, that 99Ti was like kind of punishing sometimes. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. And, and this does not feel punishing. No, but it still takes that central portion of the ski that was really strong in the responsive tail. Yep. Uh, and then kind of just makes the tip a little more friendly. Right. You know, that carbon nose was great. It was light, very maneuverable. Uh, but sometimes that was a little bit chattery. That right. was carbon in a thin application is known to do. And so when they take that out and just have this nice consistent wood core, right. again, you get that more traditional and smooth feel, yep. which I think is really nice for this 96. I mean, this is, you know, this and the 102 are certainly going to be, you know, the flagship models. Yep, you know, absolutely. The, the most they'll sell, they'll sell more 96s and 102s than yep. anything else. It's fair to say. Right. And for most people, the 96 is going to make more sense. Yep. You know, the 102, which we can talk about when we get to it, but uh, you know, this is that mid 90s is really your one ski. Right. If you're going to have one, this is a good choice. Yep. Super, super fun the other day watching Christy, Christy Brown yep. bounce around on it, do her energetic Christy Brown things. Yeah. Um, she does a good job making it look like she's skiing moguls without, without actually skiing, skiing moguls. moguls. She just always looks like she's <laughs> having fun. Yeah. Um, and you could tell that she certainly was having fun on this thing. And then, like, opposite end of the spectrum maybe like i made ryan daniel ski it yep. as i like to do that's one of my favorite things to do <laughs> like here you go let's see what you can do yeah um, and certainly didn't seem like he was being held back on it 
whatsoever. So it'll lay over some pretty nasty carves and then it'll dance around and, and maneuver and play too, yeah. which I think is, is great for a ski like this. And really, uh, if anything, kind of valuable for the mid 90 category. You know, there's a lot of skis that try and be like the most precise or, or whatever, and chase that superlative where this is just very well-rounded. You yeah. can do a whole lot, whole lot of different stuff. And then that brings us to the 102. Um, probably the ski that receives the most marketing attention. Yep. You see more 102s on social media than 99s or outgoing 94s or anything like that. Um, so this is the new 102. Um, and I would say, I think, like, this was the one that I was most worried about. Because you love the old 102. Yeah. Yeah, and a lot of people did. And a lot I of people that's do. that's going to be not the easiest transition for a lot of 102 FR skiers is to, right. is to ditch that and get that. I think most people, and I'd say, I say this seriously, because I'm, I'm not just, like, fudging it. Yeah. I think most people coming off a Ranger 102, and by most, I'm like, 90% or more, will be very, very happy with this new yeah. ski. It's great. There is, like, maybe something in there. If you're center mounting things, you could do that on the previous ski, where I maybe wouldn't recommend it on this ski. Um, kind of has a lot to do with that, the shaping of the metal. Yeah. But I was concerned when they reached out to us and said, we're going to remake the, or redesign the 102. I was like, why would you do that? Right. There's a lot of, there's pretty much overwhelming love and support for right. that 102. That's right. Hard. But having now been on this ski for a long time, actually, I've <laughs> logged a lot of hours on this ski. I prefer skiing this than the Pink Ranger. Yep. I and do. You do see a big jump in the rocker profile from that side of the wall to this side of the yep. wall. And there's still, like you were pointing out to begin with, there is still a twin tip on this ski. You can still land switch. I yep. did a 540 in the park because yep. I like felt like I needed to do that. Yep. I felt like we needed to say like, is this something that you can still kind of approach with like a freestyle mentality? And it 100% is. On the other side of its spectrum, it's far better as a directional ski. Yeah. This thing is, is a blast. It makes me feel like a quicker, better skier than most skis that I get on. And I really, really appreciate that in a ski. Um, you know, kind of Ben Chetler's like do a yep. similar thing. We just did that video. Like those, they're just refreshing and, and how easy they are to ski. This, there's more in this. There's more technology in this ski than a, than a Ben Chetler for sure. But I get like the same like visceral reaction yep. to it. If that makes sense. We've also been pretty blessed with some good conditions for testing Absolutely. these skis. Yeah. You know, just really nice soft groomers. And you know, while anything harder than what we've been dealing with will reach a limitation of this we've had good times yep on the snow that we've had with this ski yeah you know i think that for you know eastern skiers like us or lower snow zones this would serve as the wider ski yep of your grouping but you're going to see a lot of these at stow sure are ha yep. like hands down next season you're going to see a ton of celeste skis in the yep. lift line and people will be very very happy with them yeah definitely so just really smooth carver yeah you know just very nice, well-rounded turns. Yep. So, yeah, I mean, I think that was a big, big mission for Fisher is, is getting rid of that ski and, yeah. and redesigning it. Um, I know they took the process very ser seriously. I know they are very happy with the result here, and, and I am too. Yep. It's a great ski. Um, kind of like a quicker Forster. Yeah. Yeah, sweet. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and then next up, moving up a little wider to the 108. Um, and I also, like, I think we can preface this by saying, like, we probably haven't hit ideal conditions for this ski yet. No, I'd say we were, like, 70% there, but not 100%, yep. for sure. Um, you had a really good assessment of this ski before we started filming. You were like, you kind of have to look at that ski through the lens of the outgoing Ranger 107 Ti. Yeah. And that ski was a beast. Yep. That ski was strong. The st tail was really stiff. It was very supportive for people that like to just mob through choppy snow conditions. Yeah. I really liked that 107. I yeah. really liked it. No, it was a great ski. Yeah. Um, and I feel like this does carry that theme forward. Yeah. Um, we've put some people on it. 
uh, that have come off it and were like, that's a lot of ski. Yeah. Like maybe that was too much for me. <laughs> um, but I think that's, that's important for this yeah. ski. If you lost all of that, it wouldn't really fit, fit its role very well. Um, but I do think they've made it a little friendlier too. Yeah, I think we need we do need to complete that extra thirty percent to get the to get the proper analysis. Hundred um, percent. You know, when you're skiing those same soft groomers, there's a pretty big difference between the one hundred two and the one hundred eight in terms of that groomer performance. You definitely lose that edge control and edge grip in this ski, uh, but at the same time you get more stability because there's more material. Right. So you can really let this thing fly. Uh, it has an 18 meter turn radius, but like, I don't think I ever found it. You know, one of the first yeah, it things like I do it made some bigger turns. Yeah, one of the first things I like to do is to find the radius when I'm getting on a new ski, and I don't, I don't think I ever got it on this one. You know, it was just, it was fun to let it go. Right. And so I pretty much just stopped trying. Right. You know, it was easy to turn, you know, left and right, no problem. But it was hard to generate an 18 meter radius on the groomers on this ski. Yep. I think in softer snow, you're going to be able to bend it better yep. and access that side cut. So, and we've had it in some softer snow conditions. Yep. I just think, like, I'm just waiting for, like, a 8 to 12-inch day when I can ski lift line top to bottom right. on this ski or ski hayride top to bottom. Yep. Something, a steep, a long, steep pitch with some soft snow on it. Yeah. Because that's, I think that's where this ski is really going to shine. Yeah. I know yeah. Lindsay Dyer loves it. She, I got a chance to talk to her quite a bit out in Winter Park, and she was saying that she skied this thing like every day last year yep. and just loves it. So if you think about the terrain that she likes to ski, how she likes to ski, I think you can kind of draw some, draw some correlations there with how this thing's going to feel. I'm just, mo I'm impressed at how different ski companies can make like a 108 to a 110 underfoot sure. ski. Yeah. You know, they're using kind of similar shaping and rocker profiles, how different they can all be. Way different. So like it's a very it's a unique feel. I don't think I've been on something like this. Yep. You know, it's just very smooth and quiet and really likes to go, despite the stated turn radius. You know, there's a new QST one oh six. Yep. And I feel like there's some similarities between that ski and this ski. Yeah. We'll just have to wait to <laughs> yeah, find out find what out those things is. are. <laughs> And that brings us to the 116, uh, which is awesome. Like I said, I did ski it the other day just to kind of say that I had skied it. Yep. Um, certainly didn't get it into ideal snow conditions, um, but this thing's going to be a lot of fun. And I, I do feel like it's going to feel quite a bit different when you get it into ideal conditions compared to that 108. Um, we get more rise in the tail back here. So that should help with kind of the surfy, smeary aspect in, in deeper snow. Um, and then the flex patterns kind of on the softer side on this ski, which I think, I think makes sense. You know, as you're getting up wider, you get, get a more natural flex pattern there. Yeah, it's really just kind of got a nice spring to it. Exactly. Um, and these Celeste bases are, are sweet, too. That's going to make the, a magazine cover. Yeah, somebody's going to do a tweaked yeah. out tweaked out safety grab in front of them, just putting both bases right yeah. there. This will not be the last you'll see of these bases. No. And I like that they tied the whole collection together with Celeste. Yeah. Um, you know, down here on the 90, we even get kind of some, some highlights on the, on the sidewalls and the accent colors. So when you look at it all together, it just looks great. Yeah, it's cohesive. It's yep. very nice. Yep. And, so, then, and we talked about this kind of through the lens of the 115 as well. Oh, yeah, that absolutely. That ski was, yep. you know, pretty stiff for being, you know, as wide as it was. And I think that this brings that new level of surfiness and smeariness to the ski. And not that that 115 isn't, but that this is just has that different free ride different flex. flex to it. Yep. So that really sets it apart from the 115. Yep. Um, and we did just get a bunch of 115s in the door. I just saw a rack of 115s rolling by and they're like 199s or something crazy sweet i didn't even realize they made them that long <laughs> so if you want like if you're huge and you want a really big stiff powerful powder ski um let us know yeah and i'll, I'll point you to towards them <laughs> um so that's it that's the brand new 2023 ranger collection i know this was long i knew it was going to be long if you've made it this far and watched the whole thing i appreciate you bearing with us and 
and learning about these new skis. Yeah, it was so. really nice to see a whole. I like the fact that they've condensed two lines into one. We see a lot of, you know, brands Expansion. expanding. Yeah. Um, and you know whether it's necessary or not is a, is up for debate. But right. it's unique to see Fisher doing going this route, taking two successful lines and melding them into one. So yeah. it's it's just a, it's a different approach than what we've seen in the industry as a whole. Yep. Definitely. Um, so great job, Fisher. Thanks for involving us in the process. Um, like I said, we will have in-depth, not that we didn't go very, <laughs> we went pretty in-depth in this video, um, but we will do standalone reviews of each of these skis, ski them a little harder, put them through different paces, put them on different people's feet. Yep. Stuff find like some that. powder, find some moguls. Yep. Exactly. Go in the park. Exactly. Do it all. Um, in the meantime, let us know if you have any questions. Uh, you can buy them now, like I said at the beginning of the video. Um, and, yeah, we'll see you guys out there on the hill. <laughs> Bye.